I am at the Capabayama Healing Forest in Winnipeg. This space is a living memorial to honor Indigenous children lost to or affected by the residential school system. So today is a day of quiet reflection. I'm often uncertain about how to relate to the Indigenous story in Canada. My people benefited from the same system that oppressed so many others. I have the desire to speak out, but often feel that it would be better for me to just sit, listen, and learn. I am here with Carrie Sainer Harvey, who is one of the keepers of the forest. Uh, thank you so much for having us here, Carrie. Um, can you tell me a little bit about like what are the origins of the forest and the story of this space? Sure, yeah. Um, the space, I mean, it's a beautiful space. Um, it, this space about six years ago was just all grass um, for the most part, mm -hmm. trees. Um, the, it's actually a really cool story because it was about, I don't remember the exact year, maybe 2016, 2017, when um, a couple teachers, uh, one was indigenous, one was non-indigenous, yeah. so one was Métis, one was non-indigenous, um, and uh, they both decided that they uh, wanted to do something. They had heard about yeah. the, this National Healing Forest space uh, or this movement, and it was more of a movement that was okay. just beginning okay. um, in a number of different places, and they um, said, hey, maybe we could do that here yeah. in Winnipeg. So they gathered a bunch of folks that they knew and kind of began spreading the word. And yeah. that's at one point, um, my, the organization I work for, MCC, my yeah. Central Committee, heard about it and um, I began being a part of it. And yeah. so the, the conversations flowed from there as yeah. to what could we do. Um, and um, what happened was there was, uh, yeah, so like the, the idea of doing it here in St. John's Park, I think really appealed to a number of folks uh, because num the, a number of the folks on the committee were, you know, from the local area, yeah, spent a lot of time in the park. Here. And St. John's and Park is like right in the middle of Winnipeg. It totally is. Yeah. 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 And yeah, really cool. You know, accessible to the north end here. Yeah. Um, a lot of folks, you know, bike and park and walk through here and spend a lot of time here. Um, and and so yeah, I think it was a really great idea to put it here. Um, we consulted a number of elders, um, and then at some point, then yeah. we hired a. Um, um, Sean Finnegan, who is a landscape architect, uh, okay. hero, uh, artist, and he designed a sort of an initial concept draft, okay. and and it sort of looked a lot like this, um, and uh, but it was sort of in a concept phase, yeah. And but it was based on the medicine wheel, based on um, the idea that we would have a space that would be um, for you could come for ceremony, yeah, you could come for um, being just being on the land. I feel like I kind of have a little bit of a, of a conflicted relationship when it comes to um, indigenous um, issues. I often feel like I want to uh, do something, I want to say something, I want to, you know, I want to act in a way, I want to uh, advocate, but oftentimes it feels like with regards to the indigenous story, it's better if I just sit listen and learn hmm. can you talk a bit about this conflicted relationship well um you know i can't speak to your journey yeah um i mean it's, that's i think that's though you know it's i've had you know similar journey as a non-indigenous person thinking a lot about this um i don't think there's necessarily one right path on that i think there is absolutely a space for us to sit and listen mm -hmm. um, and in fact I think that was something we haven't done well in the past and um, if we are going to move forward we need to listen well um, I think though that listening well doesn't preclude action doesn't preclude collaboration particularly mm -hmm. I think you know like when I think about this space to me it represents some of the best of that kind of opportunity because mm -hmm. it's um, it's initiative taken by non-indigenous folks as well, um, but not done solely on their own, thinking that they know how to do things right. Mm -hmm. um, it was done in collaboration. It was like saying, I, um, I care and I want to do something. And so I'm going to reach out and talk about what, you know, what are the options and listen well. Um, and so, yeah, that includes, you know, taking the time to, um, time and energy and 
sort of, uh, what do I say, what's the word, um, where, you know, it, it takes a certain amount of impetus to yeah. get yourself to say, okay, I'm going to reach out to someone I may not know or I don't know very well yeah. and say, I'm going to um, see what I can do um, yeah. and, and ask. And, you know, and that asking um, and that following through is how you build relationships. Yeah, I mean, for anyone who's watching this video, like, if they want to do something, yep. if they want to be more active, if they, 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 if they feel a little bit like me, where maybe they, they have felt like they want to act, but have also thought it's more important for them to sit, listen, and learn, hmm. are there small actions people can take? Are there things that can be done? What, 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 what yeah. can people do? That's a good question. Um... I think a good place to start is to do it with others. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think finding others that have already begun building relationships or being on a journey doing something. Um, I mean, there are often, whether it's you know, in a church group or in school or in workplaces, sometimes there are initiatives that people are beginning to take mm -hmm. and coming alongside and saying, you know, is there something I can do to be a part of that? Um, or, you know, be a part of a, of a planning group or something. There's of course a lot of um, a lot of indigenous-led initiatives happening in the community, and/or marches. You know, um, if that's one way that you want to express. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, a lot of vigils for those that have you know lost lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just showing up and being in solidarity mm -hmm. is. is an action yeah um, and I think that's also really really important and sometimes it's just a matter of being there and being quiet and listening but knowing that you're there is actually really significant um, for many um, and especially when it's in difficult times right when there's loss of family members or um, whatever it may happen to be yeah uh, Carrie thank you so much for uh, taking the time to yeah. sit down today um, thanks so much for being a part of this initiative and and I think also on a personal note thank you so much for for creating a space that that feels so welcoming yeah. for people to come no matter where they are in their journey whether they are uh, very aware uh, of the indigenous story and they really have a have a deep reservoir of knowledge and feeling when it comes to it or whether they're uh, a complete outsider who doesn't really know the story at all. It's, it's such an amazing, welcoming space um, for everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And everyone is welcome here, right? It's not, it's, um, you don't have to have a reservation to be here. All you do is just come and spend time in the park. It's, it's open for everybody, even the, the four-legged I saw a squirrel just peeking over there. So like, all, 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 all creatures are welcome yeah. in this space, yeah. This is a beautiful park. It's a monument to tragic events that need to be remembered. And it's a meditative space for all of us to reflect on the role that we play in this story. I don't have any answers, but sitting here at least helps me more clearly consider the questions. Mm -hmm.